Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Ankit Parak and I work as a consultant in pediatric pulmonology, allergy and sleep medicine at Children's Chest Clinic, New Delhi and BLK Max Hospital, Pusa Road, New Delhi. Now most children who have pneumonia improve in three to five days with antibiotics. Their symptoms improve, their fever goes down, their cough improves and their x-rays turn back to normal. But some children get prolonged symptoms because of their pneumonia and their x-ray seems to get worse. This is a situation which is described as persistent pneumonia in children. So in this video, we'll talk about what are the causes of persistent pneumonia in children, what investigations we do in such situations and how do we deal with such children. Now, pneumonia is usually secondary to viruses or bacteria. The most common cause of persistent pneumonia in children is a pneumonia which is not properly treated with antibiotics. Either the antibiotic given is not correct or the duration of the dose of the antibiotic is improper. Now, in some situation, the pneumonia could be due to atypical bacteria and the most common is mycoplasma pneumonia. <laughs> Tuberculosis is a very common cause of persistent pneumonia in children, TB being endemic in India at present. Now some children can get pneumonia because of fungi. Now this pneumonia because of fungi is uncommon and usually seen in setting of immunodeficiency. So some children can have immunodeficiency like a common variable immunodeficiency, extreme A, a gamma globulinemia and some rare diseases as well. In these situations, fungus can cause the pneumonia, but usually in children who are otherwise well, fungal pneumonias are uncommon. Now, there can be other causes of pneumonia. For example, children can have a retained foreign body or a foreign particle in the airway, which is appearing like a pneumonia. So, a peanut in the airway or an almond in the airway is not something which is uncommon especially in children who are young. Now, apart from this, there could be children who have gastroesophageal reflux where the acid from the tummy comes up into the food pipe and goes into the lungs. So gastroesophageal reflux can be a, a cause of pneumonia in some children. Now, apart from this, there can be cysts in the lungs uh, called as a congenital cystic adenomatide malformation of lung. It could be other cysts like a hydrated cyst, it could be a bronchogenic cyst, there could be other problems with the lung such as a sequestered segment, there could be recurrent aspiration because of a connection between the food pipe and the windpipe which is known as a tracheoesophageal fistula. There are children who have problems with their cilia which line the epithelium of the airway and these mucociliary disorders can lead to persistent pneumonia. The most common of these which we see in children are cystic fibrosis and primary ciliary dyskinesia. Now if a child has persistent pneumonia then how do we go about it? What investigations need to be done? Now a proper evaluation of these children is extremely important so that we can make a correct diagnosis at an early stage which can prevent a damage to the lungs. Now investigations which are done in such situations is basically dependent on a particular child and decided on a case-to-case -case basis. So usually we start by examining the child, taking a detailed case history and then looking at the serial radiographs which have been done. Now once we do that, we then try and formulate a plan that what further investigations are required. A CT scan of the lung is, is something which is very useful in such situations. It helps us to understand in detail uh, looking at the lungs uh, in a much better way as compared to a chest x-ray. Now some children also require 
examining the airways from inside, which is known as a bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy is a very safe investigation, which helps us to examine the airways from inside. And in addition, we can take sputum samples from inside, which can be sent to the laboratory for advanced test. Advanced microbiological test, cultures, investigations for tuberculosis like a gene expert test and fungal cultures are sometimes required. Now, other investigations which might be required could be things like a spit chloride test. There could be test requires for workup of immunodeficiency. This could be in the form of blood counts. They could be in the form of immunoglobulins levels, CD4, CD8 counts, and sometimes more specialized tests like a flow cytometry. So in case your child is having a persistent pneumonia, you do need to get in touch with a pediatric pulmonologist for proper diagnosis and management of your child. Thank you.